important for a webinar. So on the right side of the screen there where I just posted a note a couple minutes ago, you guys have already been chatting amongst yourselves, which is great. You can just type in there, give me a, you know, hello, yes, I can hear you, anything just to let me know that my voice is indeed coming through, and then we will take it from there. So just let me know that you can hear me in that chat box. Awesome. All right, at least one <laughs> couple, couple I can hear is usually a good sign. Um, as I did mention in my note, which is a little bit um, up there, if anything does arise in terms of technical difficulties, audio or video, just try refreshing your browser or even logging in from a different one. One of those two things usually, re usually resolves the problem, but hopefully we can avoid everything. I will also note, uh, as many of you are stuck at home, I am as well. We have some construction going on downstairs, so hopefully uh, the app I downloaded to mute that noise will indeed do that. But I'm sorry if anything does come through. Gotta love the whole working from home element of this. Okay, well, speaking of, we know that this era we are currently going through kind of ranges from weird to incredibly difficult for you guys. So with that in mind, this is part of our webinar series, HoneyBooks webinar series called Prepare Now, Thrive Later. So we've partnered with industry experts like Natalie, who we'll hear from in a little bit, to bring best practices and industry knowledge to help you take advantage of this downtime, which is kind of hard to do sometimes, um, and really use it to prepare yourselves and your businesses to hit the ground running when things do return to 100% at some point in the future. So do make sure to check out the other upcoming webinars we have to make sure that you got all the information from all our industry experts, and hopefully one of our uh, HoneyBook folks can post a link to that in the chat. Now, a couple other bits of housekeeping before we dive in. This webinar should run about an hour, so we're shooting for end time of about 11 a.m. Pacific time. It is recorded, however, so if you tune out for a sec, if you're coming in a little bit late, not to worry. You can always come back to this link that you use to log in. Replay will be available as soon as we wrap up today. We should also have the replays to all of our webinars available on our HoneyBook blog, which again, hopefully someone from our HoneyBook team can post a link to at some point, make that easily accessible for you. Now we have also all discovered that right-hand side chat box. That is a great place to chat in questions along the way. We do have a couple folks from HoneyBook in there to help answer questions. I see Katie from HoneyBook just posted something in there. She is one of our many wonderful folks from HoneyBook. So they can help answer HoneyBook related questions. And you can also always get in touch with HoneyBook after the fact by emailing concierge at honeybook.com. That is our customer support team. They're always happy to answer product related questions. But if you have any questions specifically for Natalie, which you inevitably will upon hearing uh, some of the wonderful information you have, um, we should have about 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the webinar to address those. So feel free to keep those coming in the chat box and we'll kind of collect them along the way and make sure that she has a chance to answer those at the end. So today, we are going to be focusing on improving your branding and your brand's visibility, which you can do now, even if you're still sheltered in place, or maybe things aren't quite running at 100% in your state yet. So again, for that, we have brought in our branding and SEO expert, Natalie Murad, to walk us through defining your brand and then increasing the visibility for your brand through things like SEO, well-placed content, et cetera. Now, of course, we will also talk a little bit about how HoneyBook, where I work, can help with some of the concepts that Natalie discusses. So if you are unfamiliar with HoneyBook, we are a business management platform that allows creative small businesses to manage their clients and their projects from first inquiry all the way through to final payment and project completion. So that means within our platform, you can send emails to your clients, track project progress, and send contracts and invoices to get paid for online, uh, get paid and also receive uh, online signatures. So kind of runs the gamut in terms of product management and client management. Um, so it's a real helpful tool. So again, for any HoneyBook related questions, feel free to ask them in the chat, but we are also encouraging you guys to join us after this webinar, right after at 11.15 Pacific time for a 30 minute working session. And in that we're going to review uh, some of the topics that we talk about, HoneyBook specific topics, such as today we'll talk about setting up your branding and where that touches your clients in HoneyBook. So we'll do a bit of a deeper dive on one of your, um, on some of the branding that you can do within HoneyBook. So feel free to join us for that working session after. We're kind of some step-by-step -step how to's and stuff. 
great opportunity to get hands-on experience with some of Honeybook's features. But I will stop yammering now because I am not the star of the show today. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Natalie Murad of, of Taylor Brands, and she is going to take you through some wonderful content today. So Natalie, take it away. I'm gonna share my screen really quickly. Great. So first of all, I want to say that it's uh, it's really great to be here. It's awesome to see all your messages and everyone's upping up on uh, coffee and tea and from all you know different cities. So uh, it's really nice to see all of you here. And I'm going to talk about, hold on one second, let me load this up. So uh, we already went through this stuff. So yes, I'm Natalie. I'm the head of communications at Taylor Brands. We're an AI logo design and branding platform for small and solo businesses. What that means is that anybody can go to our platform and create a logo and a complete brand identity, meaning they can take that logo and create a brand style and then use it for their website and for their social media and even to print um, all of this on really cool merchandise. And what sets us apart is that we don't use generic templates, meaning we use AI and machine learning. Um, and pretty much all that means is that we take a lot of data points from uh, top industry uh, you know, trends and design trends, and we put that all into, you know, into, our uh, into our machine, into our system, and that's how we can create uh, a really amazing logo for you. And obviously you can then customize it any way you want, uh, change the fonts, change the colors, et cetera, and then use that to pretty much brand all, your, all of your assets online. So here's a short video uh, explaining a little bit more what we do, and then we'll dig deep into improving your brand. We're Taylor Brands, the world's first AI-powered logo design and branding platform. We've empowered over 14 million people across 120 countries to kickstart their business with great branding and design. Our AI tech designs professional and unique logos in seconds, and they're completely customizable, making sure everyone gets the perfect logo. From there, our platform makes it ridiculously easy to create a complete brand identity in minutes and with zero design experience. In the Taylor Brand Studio, you'll find a custom website builder with your logo and brand style already built in, so you can make a beautiful website that best represents you online. A design tool that makes it easier than ever to create on-brand designs for social media, print, or any marketing needs. And a complete print store to print your logo on business cards, hats, shirts, or any other merch you can think of. With Taylor Brands, anyone can look professional right from the start. Learn more at taylorbrands.com. Awesome. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to tell you a little bit or share a little bit about how you can own your brand uh, while sh shelter in place. I'll review what the three C's are and the power of interactions when it comes to really building and conveying your brand. And then I'll talk about how to improve your brand uh, using SEO, content, social, and PR. So owning your brand. So I really like this quote, uh, the alternative to good design is always bad design. There's no such thing as no design. And I want to argue that there is no such thing as no brand. Uh, in the simplest term, a brand is the perception that people have when they come in contact with you or your business. Okay. You, if it's a personal brand, which means that we always have feelings and thoughts and ideas and judgments whenever we come in contact with anybody. And so the same thing goes with your business. It doesn't wait for you to have the most beautiful design or the beautiful logo for, for people to start having opinions and feelings and thoughts about and perceptions about what your business stands for and what it means to them. And so a, a brand already exists, whether or not you have a logo, the design, the language, the tone of voice, the pictures, all those things can contribute to it, but not having those things also says something about what your brand is or what your business is. And so the easiest way to improve your brand, again, the idea is that you already have a brand because you're already interacting with people all the time. So every touch point that you have with a customer or with your audience or with anybody, right, because anybody can refer a client to you, uh, matters. That is the way that you express your brand. And a really easy way to improve your brand, kind of a quick win, is to look at those existing interactions and, and make sure that you're conveying something really basic and important about what your brand is. So it'll make more sense in the next slide. So um, I wanna be clear about something. A lot of people, when they think, this is one of the big misconceptions when it comes to branding, and I'm trying to break that apart here, because a lot of people think that in order to have a really beautiful brand, again, you need to spend hours or days or weeks on the perfect logo, on making things really pretty, on tweaking your images and all that stuff. 
that is really, really important, okay? But there's many foundations to branding. And before you even start really thinking and spending way too much time making things beautiful, you need to establish trust. Everything comes down to trust. And so when you're looking at the existing interactions that you have with your customers or with potential customers or with any audience in general, that is number one. Before you want them to think that you're really pretty or really clever or really you know, witty with your language or that you have such a you know, compelling personality, you need them to trust you because people do business with people and businesses that they trust. So how do you establish trust? What's the easiest way to establish trust? I call these the three C's. So it's about being clear, it's about being consistent, and it's about being competent. Okay, now we're talking about your existing interactions right now. So, like I said here, the foundation of a brand is trust. Customers trust your brand when their experiences consistently meet or beat their expectations. It's really simple. Think about this with people. If you tell someone, you know, to show up at 4 p.m. wearing a suit and they show up at 6 p.m. wearing PJs, you know, that loses, you lose your trust in them. And the same thing is with your brand and every communication you have with your customer. Okay, so. What does it mean to be clear, consistent, and competent? Being clear. This is the most important thing, okay? When someone comes in contact with your business, and if for a split second they are unsure about who you, who you service, right, who your target audience is, what your actual offer is, how they can get in contact with you, or where you're located if that's relevant, you lost them. OK, we all have split second, you know, like milliseconds to make an impression on someone. And you don't want to make it difficult for anybody to understand who you are and what you do and how they can get in contact with you. So that means that you need to define that one liner ASAP. OK, that should be the most important thing that you have. Now, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. OK, this is also a really important thing. It doesn't matter. It's going to change because your brand evolves with every additional interaction that you have with your customers. So the most important thing is just just write it out and make sure that it's as clear to anybody who you are, what you do, you know, what the actual offer is and where you're located if you're local. Uh, be consistent. This is the second thing. Once you have this one liner, it should be everywhere. That means that if I'm going to your website or I'm going to your Instagram profile or I'm going to your profile on, on Yelp or I'm you know going anywhere that, that has your information, that one liner should be it doesn't need to be exactly the same. You can you know change a little bit according to the platform, but the message needs to be exactly the same. So the easiest thing to do is to go through every single time, every touch point that you have with a customer, with an audience or anything like that and make sure that that message is clear and that you're answering these, you know, one, two, these four things that are that are really important. Now, when it comes to your logo, I write it here, your same logo everywhere. You know, design is, is one thing and that's really, really important. If you have a logo, put it everywhere. It's such an easy win. Put it on your email signature, put it on your invoice. Again, every touch point that you have with your customer should have your logo and should have consistent, you know, your one liner or your messaging or anything like that. Um, and be competent. So one of the biggest things that you want to really portray, right? Like for people to trust you, they want to know that you're experienced and that you can actually provide value. And so look for every opportunity to share testimonials um, or any examples of your work, okay? And this is, again, this is before we talk about personality or tone of voice or really complicated designs. These are the bedrock of creating a brand that people can trust and therefore want to do business with. And luckily there's platforms uh, like Taylor Brands and like HoneyBook that make it super easy to brand everything uh, that you have when it comes to communicating with your customers. So I'll send it over to Marika. <laughs> awesome. All right, let me get myself up here. Yeah. So. A lot of what Natalie just talked about is stuff that you can do in HoneyBook or a platform like it. So you have worked hard to develop your voice and your brand, get all your assets ready, uh, you know, make a list of those existing interactions you have with clients. You've put everything in place there. So now it's time to put everything in place in whatever platform or series of platforms that you're actually using to manage your business. Now, if you're using a platform, uh, uh, HoneyBook or a platform like it, lots of touch points are going to be through that platform. So using something like this it is easy to set yourself up for success right off the bat without having to worry about a cat's in this frame without having to worry about redoing or readjusting for every new client 
So I'm going to share my HoneyBook screen really quickly so we can actually take a look at how this works within the HoneyBook platform. So one hot second here. Screen two, that's what I want. All right, getting that all shared. Okie dokie. So within HoneyBook branding, there are a few really easy things that you can do. So we've already talked about logos and how you want those across the board, every place you interact with your clients in HoneyBook or something like HoneyBook, you can add those business logos really easily. So here we see that you have the ability to add kind of like a main logo and then a secondary logo. Now these will go in a couple different places, but it ensures that whatever you are sending to folks, that logo is there. So for example, over here on the right, you see that this logo appears on a file that you might send to your clients maybe an invoice, maybe a contract, whatever that might be. You also have the ability to here to select a button color. Now that sounds small, but this actually kind of ties everything together, get your theme throughout everything, and you can actually set this to match whatever sort of your brand aesthetic is. And of course, behind, uh, behind those two things, we see a default header image. Now within HoneyBook, you are sending uh, emails, you're creating projects, basically the kind of containers that hold everything related to a particular job with a particular client, and you're sending files, like I said, contracts or invoices or things like that. Creating a default header image allows you to say like, okay, this is the image that I want the most within those touch points. So I can just select one that kind of matches my brand most closely and save that so that every time I create a project or every time I create a file, that default header image is going to be the one that pops up. Now I can always change it later, but it kind of saves you that time. Now these things might seem small, but these are the details that make your brand cohesive. They pull everything together through every single touch point. Natalie talked about consistency being one of those like absolute pillars that you need to pay attention to. This is an easy way to ensure that. Now, another thing that you can do in HoneyBook is populate your library, your image and file library, with images that you might use for project and file headers uh, and other things as well. So if I head to my library, we can see a few of those options here. You can add those image assets. You can also add assets like files and PDFs that you might send regularly. Having everything prepared in advance right here, make sure that all of your communications, again, are super cohesive but also really easy to put together. So that if I do need to create an invoice or another file on the fly, I can just pull out some of these images that I know match my brand and put them together really easily. Now I wanna do a really quick review of how all of this branding can, can kind of come together in HoneyBook. So to do that, I'm gonna start by just creating a new project. Now again, a project in HoneyBook is basically just the container that holds everything related to a particular client. So I'm going to click my new project button up here. Just start something real fast here so we can see what this looks like. Assuming my internet, you know, doesn't absolutely poop out on us. Oops. Skip this step. But as we can see, I just created a project. This is something that your client will see. They might interact with this. So we can see that we have our default header image. Um, but again, we can always change that. Whenever you see your little image icon, you can do that. You can also change the name of this for the future. So again, these are just really small, but, but simple, but impactful, all these buts, ways to make sure that everything sort of matches your brand and everything that your client touches is what you want it to be. It looks the way you want it to look and sounds the way you want it to sound. So your client can see all of this information in here. So everything you got, oh, there you go. That's the default header image I selected. I think my internet's a few seconds behind the rest of us. But again, this is a major touch point that your client might interact with. So it's an easy way to make sure that everything looks great. Now, the other way that you might interact is with a file. So for example, maybe an invoice. So I'm just going to create a new one really quickly so we can again sort of see what that looks like. So I'm just starting from scratch and there you go. There's my default header image again. So I don't need to worry about that. My logo is in here. So I don't need to worry about that either. We know that that's in there, but of course I can always change it later. And then any items that I add that I've added before, I can save images too. So if I'm sending invoices that I want to charge people for, I can really quickly select them from my item list, which my internet is having trouble with, but 
theoretically, <laughs> I can save these so that I can really quickly apply them to my projects and my files moving forward. Now, you'll also notice if I click my client view button, we see that default header image and we um, can even see um, you know, what it looks like for my clients. So we can always come in and check out what they're going to see, but it's a really, really easy way, you know, getting all of these assets set up in advance is an easy way to make sure that everything stays cohesive in HoneyBook. So I think that is the gist that I wanted to go over that kind of like core of the branding right now. So I will pass it back off to Natalie for the next section. Great. That was awesome and super helpful. Um, it's really cool how easy HoneyBook makes it to, to be consistent and to you know make your things look beautiful and on brand. So take advantage of that. Um, and I do want to add that, you know, with when it comes to this stuff, it almost sounds rudimentary. It almost sounds obvious. You know, you should have your logo everywhere. I guarantee you, I do not know what the what the exact statistic is. We work with over 14 million small businesses all over the world. I'm making the statistic up, but I can definitely tell you that it's in the vicinity of something like over 90% do not do this. Okay, so by doing this, you're giving yourself a competitive advantage. Like, trust me. <laughs> um, so it's definitely a good idea to, to review this stuff, especially when you know we're home right now and maybe hopefully there's a little bit more time to kind of go through um, all these things together. So to sum up kind of what I said, the brand, your brand is conveyed through interactions that you have with people, uh, users, customers, uh, potential customers, et cetera. Those interactions are gold. That is an opportunity to show up uh, and to present your brand at, at every moment. And so you should take advantage of those. And so step one, um, a really quick thing you could do, really just go through all the ways that you interact with your customers. Uh, Marika showed some really good you know, examples of, of how you can do it in the platform, but everything from an email signature to how you show up in directories, like I said, make a list and then try to you know, improve these interactions by coming off as clear, uh, consistent and, and competent like I wrote, okay? So the next thing, so we talked about existing interactions, okay? These interactions already exist, you're already working with customers, you're already you know, marketing, et cetera, and that's how you can improve things that exist right now. But how can you increase the number of interactions that you have? That's, that's the way that you can build a brand over time. You need to be visible, you need to show up consistently. So one easy way, I'm not going to get too much into SEO because it's kind of a whole world and I, and I kind of wanted to focus a little bit more of the content, but a few kind of easy wins when it comes to SEO. Um, the real basic premise of SEO is that there's, you know, there's an, a, a Google algorithm and that's the way that it's mapping the internet. And your job as a business uh, owner or as someone who has a website or wants to create uh, a brand or, or you know, to, to build a business online or, or offline, but wants people to find them, has to make it as easy as possible for Google to map out all the connections that will bring customers to you. Okay. I won't go too deep into that, but the idea is again, making things very simple so that Google can connect the dots. So for example, if you're a local business and you're trying to get local clients, this is a mistake that, you know, Katie from HoneyBook was telling me that she sees a lot. We see it all the time. We have a photographer in Austin. And if you were to ask Google, if this photographer was based in Austin, Google would have no idea because this photographer, uh, you know, theoretical photographer doesn't say, you know, photography in Austin as their headline on their website. And they don't have a Google My Business profile with their address showing that they're in Austin. And they don't have on their Yelp or whatever directories they're using, it doesn't say their address in a very clear way. And on Instagram and on Facebook, they do not say photography in Austin. And so not only are you confusing potential customers because it's really frustrating to, you know, like a photographer and then realize that they're not even in your city or they, you know, or they're not relevant, you're also confusing Google, you're confusing, you know, the, the way people search, you're, you're not making it clear. And so a really kind of these really quick tips is that if you're location based, make sure that your city and your state or wherever, you know, you're actually able to help clients is as clear as possible everywhere. Okay. Because your location is, is critical. You can't work with clients that are not in your location. So you want to make that super, super clear. Um, optimize your website. Keywords, I mean, we won't go too deep into it. If you're a photographer, then, you know, it's really easy to just use common sense. You don't even really need to do a lot of keyword research here, but just make sure that your big headlines on your website 
every opportunity to be as clear as possible about who you are and what you offer. Okay, because the system behind the scenes is that's information that's helping it, you know, direct more uh, relevant people to your site and then content and blog, which we'll get into in a second. Um, OK, so I want to share kind of a, a, you know, a new approach maybe to I don't know if it's new, but like, a, you know, another approach to content. The idea here is to, again, increase interactions. We're all home right now. We're not going to networking events. We're not, you know, pitching our businesses, you know, face to face with people, et cetera. So the Internet is, is where we you know, where we're going to show up. So I want to, you know, I want, you know, to share a way of thinking of content creation and distribution as a way that can increase interactions. Um, again, with your audience um, across the entire cycle. And so when you're thinking about creating a piece of content, um, these are you know four questions you can ask. And of course, we'll go into them in a second. Um, so is it relevant? Is it distributable? Does it consistently provide value? And does it boost my credibility? So number one, is it relevant? So usually when people sit down to write a piece of content, um, they use either common sense, right? If you're a photographer and people keep asking you, um, and I don't know, some specific question, you might create content for that because you know your audience is interested in that, or you'll do some keyword research on Google. Both of those activities are not creating more interactions with your audience, right? They're kind of done behind the scenes and then your audience only sees the finished product, which is the piece of content. So again, a way to increase interactions is to involve your audience in the process of even deciding what to write about. Okay. So that means that if you have a community, if you have a social media following, if you're part of groups, leverage that, ask a poll, you know, let's say people are, you know, I, I read a statistic that people are eloping more, you know, because you can't have obviously wedding venues that are with a lot of people. And so ask questions to your community, ask, you know, maybe, yeah, do a quick poll. People that were planning to get married in the next six months, are you going to elope? Or are you going to do a smaller wedding? Um, ask questions in communities, you know, just say, I'm doing some re research and I'm curious. Um, are, you know, what are you thinking about post COVID wedding plans? Or I'm not entirely sure what the subject would be, but the whole idea is that you're not only sourcing information that is actually can help you really create a, an awesome, you know, blog post or whatever, but again, you're showing up as someone who cares and someone who's experienced in this industry. And when people see somebody asking about a specific topic, they immediately think, oh, that person is associated with that topic. And you want to create as many associations in people's minds so that when they think photographer, they'll think, oh, you know, that person in that group wrote about, you know, that's how that's how it works. That's how branding works. That's how visibility works. Um, and again, you want to strengthen those associations. Um, again, and then not only that, you can also, um, another way, so this is kind of in a separate vein, but you can source ideas and therefore, you know, show up as someone who who is, you know, asking questions and curious and, and engaged with this topic. And then you can also, you know, instead of going ahead and just writing a full blog post, just do small blog posts with small captions about small different, you know, small topics. And A, that can create, you know, more content for you to post. We're all looking for more content to post. And that way you can also, you know, ask people, is this interesting for you? I'm thinking about writing a blog post. Is this interesting? And therefore, you're also involving people in the process. And you're seeing if it's interesting. Um, so that's a that's an interesting way to, to you know, approach, uh, you know, deciding on a content topic. Now, uh, when you're creating content, a lot of us know that, you know, you can create a million blog posts, but if you're not able to promote them in an effective way, then not a lot of people will see them. And again, what we're trying to do right now is increase your the awareness, right? Your brand awareness. That's when we say improve your brand, we're saying you want pe more people to know, uh, you know, what your brand is. So um, a really, you know, an interesting way to think about content or about anything that you're doing is just think about other people that are doing similar things or that target a similar audience and leverage their communities. So if you're, you know, again, wedding venues, um, you know, create a post if you're, let's say, in Austin or something and you're trying to think of, you know, wedding venues that are less than 50 uh, people or, you know, you can get creative with this. But think about it from the beginning, before you even start writing the content piece, think about who you can tag, who you can mention, and therefore you can you know, uh, increase the, your awareness of your you know, business or if you're a personal brand yourself in their communities. So you should be thinking about that from the beginning. Um, and there's a lot of creative ways uh, to do that. Um, and again, think of blogs and publications you can submit it to. I'll get to that a little bit in the, in the PR section, but 
again, it's another way to get to increase your reach uh, and the people that know about you, uh, you know, right from the beginning. Can this consistently provide value? So, uh, you know, a lot of us are not in the business of just, you know, creating a ton of content all the time. And it's really hard and it's, you know, it takes a lot of time and resources, et cetera. So I think a really good way to kind of, you know, hit a lot of birds with, you know, one stone is to, you know, let's say you created the best, you know, wedding venues or, or something like that in Austin. Try to think of how you can take the content that you have and turn it into a PDF, okay? That's just a file that, is a template or a cheat sheet or a checklist that can provide value. So maybe it's, you know, the uh, 10 things to think about before you book a venue, right? Because if you're a photographer, you're trying to, you know, uh, target people before they even, you know, before they choose a photographer. So you want them right at that point where they're starting to think about the wedding, right? And so when you create a checklist like this or any piece of content that can provide a lot of value to your customers, when you make it into a PDF, it means that you could start taking this and building your authority. So for example, um, you know, you can have it on, let's say you're, you're trying to onboard a new client or, or something like that. You can give them all the information. And then in the PS, you can say, you know, I also created a checklist, uh, check out my checklist, something like that. And that again, is part of showing up as, as, as competent, as a professional, as a, and as an expert in your field. So you can take this um, you know, lead magnet or, you know, checklist or whatever it is that we're talking about. And you can plug it in to a lot of different places. And that's a way to build credibility and authority, you know, on your website, on your emails, in your PS, even on your social. Um, it's something that lives on. And uh, the idea is that it's also, it's evergreen, meaning it's, you know, it's, most of the time it'll it, it's you don't need to update it all the time you know a checklist for choosing a wedding venue uh it tends not to change so much and it's just a really valuable piece of content um and that's a way again to show up as an expert um in your branding and uh does it boost my credibility so the best thing really you can do if you're a small business if you're a, a anybody right now um you know it's hard it's not easy but if you can get a local paper or a publication or anything to write about you. If you can think of a pitch that you have, you know, how you're dealing with COVID, um, three ways that you're dealing with COVID, um, you know, anything like that. If you can get a third party to write about you and you post that on your social and you add a link to that, you know, on your email or on your website or whatever it is, that is the best way to show credibility and to show authority and to you know really get people to trust you. Again, the game, the, the name of the game here is trust. And so really think about it. It's, it's an activity that has a lot of uh, has like a really high return on the investment. And because you know COVID is affecting everyone and creatives and all of that, it's a really good opportunity to, to write about how it's affecting you. And people are picking up these stories because it's a human interest story. And people want to hear, you know, they want to hear how other people, how other businesses are are coping um, during this time. And so you'd be surprised how, you know, how receptive uh, publications and media and local reporters and newspapers or, you know, or photography blogs or, or whatever it is um, are to these kinds of stories. And it's a good time to capitalize on that. Um, and so the final points here, I know I covered a lot. Um, oh, wait, before we go into the final points, I'm sending this over to Marika now, right? <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All righty. So, yeah, from the HoneyBook side here, we just kind of wanted to finish up by talking about how, you know, you have, you've now, you know, if you're following Natalie's wonderful tips and tricks and tools, you've put in all that work to create your branding framework and then all the stuff we were just talking about, actually building that trust, bringing clients in and upping your visibility. Uh, so with all of that in place, with all of that work you've put in, you want to make sure that your voice and your brand and that trust that you've built extend all the way through whatever the next steps you take with those clients you bring in are. So we talked about how a system like HoneyBook can help set that branded stage. We looked at that a little bit, getting your logos, the colors and imagery in the places you want them, but you can extend that even further. And in our case, you can do that by creating the framework for the files you send to your clients in a way that continues that brand experience and you know, make sure that that trust maintains throughout the whole thing. They see this, they know it's you, they know they can trust you. 
So we saw really quickly how an invoice has a few branded options. And every file type in HoneyBook does allow for at least you know, some level of customization like that. But the best example of this in HoneyBook is the brochure file. This is uh, what I want to look at right now. So give me one sec here while well, I share my screen once more. There we go. Okie doke. So again, you've done the work to bring your clients in. A brochure file like you're looking at right now will likely be an early touch point with a potential customer. So brochures in HoneyBook allow you to showcase your brand and showcase your services without requiring any sort of commitment from people. Again, a nice way to build trust. You're not making sure that they get you off the bat there, but they understand what you are, who you are, and what you offer. So this file is a great place to communicate, continue communicating your brand's value and continue the brand story that you've put together, really kind of hammering home all the work that you've done up until this point. So we can see here that you can make it beautiful and branded with those images. We see this, uh, this image coming up again with wonderful text and colors, really making sure this all kind of is cohesive with your brand. And again, really using it to present your business story and you know a little bit about you as well. So again, making sure that that trust maintains for your clients when they see this and they're like, yep, okay, I was, I was pretty sold, now I'm 100% sold. I, I'm at the beginning of my relationship with this person and, and I'm digging them. I would like to continue working with them. Now the other thing you can do in this brochure file is actually add in the services that you offer. So that's kind of what you're going for. So in addition to your business story, you can say, okay, here is what I offer. This is a great example of including some of those beautiful images along with the services that you offer, and your client can actually select what they're interested in, again, without any sort of commitment um, from them. So this is, again, sort of the best case scenario for like extending your brand. This brochure file really allows you to do that with all of the formatting options, with all of the imagery that you can add, um, you can even add questions and things like that. So you can really make this flexible and make this be the extension of your brand through that first or that early touch point with the client that you have done all that great work to bring in. So that is a great file to bear in mind when you are using HoneyBook or if you're using a separate system, maybe something that's kind of similar. Now, just a reminder that if you are interested in learning more about brochures or some of our branding options, Feel free to join our working session, which is just a little bit after this, 11.15 Pacific time. We're gonna do kind of a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to build these. So that will be a great place if you're unsure how to kind of get these together, join us after that because we're gonna walk you through it. So until then though, I wanna pass it back to Natalie for one final time to wrap up and then we can take some questions. So I've seen a few come in, we've been collecting them. Feel free to keep those questions specifically for Natalie coming so that we can take those last you know, 10, 15 minutes or so to make sure that we get all your questions answered. So Natalie, back to you one last time. Great. Great. Um, one second. Um, okay, so you guys can see this. Oh, no. Um, okay, so I, I wanted to say that uh, I love this brochure feature with HoneyBook. Um, take advantage of it. This is such a great way, again, to show up as a professional and to you know include all the information that anyone needs about your business. And these things matter. Details really, really matter. And this is a really easy way to do it. So I love that. And again, in your About Me section, I mean, imagine how great that would be if you could say that you were you know top five, I don't know, photographers in Austin by this magazine or whatever it is that you could boost credibility, you know, written about in these, uh, you know, publications or, or whatever it is. So always think about that stuff, because this is, again, another place where you need to be super clear about who you are, what you offer, um, you know, what what sets you apart, and then you can give these kind of, you know, uh, what's it called, the credibility boosters with these, uh, you know, the checklist or, or a media mention or something like that. So final points, your brand, the the, your brand exists right now. You already have a brand. It might not be the best brand, but but people are having thoughts, right? They 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 have different perceptions about how your business is. That that already exists, whether you want it to or not. It's there, and the re the way that they arrive at these perception is through the interactions that they have with you, and they're already having interactions with you. So to really drive this point home, 
make every one of those interactions awesome, come across as clear, competent, and consistent. Uh, and use HoneyBook, use other tools uh, like Taylor Brands, et cetera, whatever it takes. Uh, it's really, really important that, that happen. And when you want to increase your interactions and increase your visibility, don't do a lot of work. Um, I don't want to say for free, but but try to think of like, you know, when you're, you're already putting a lot of time and a lot of resources into creating content or into doing uh, certain things and just try to think about how throughout the entire process you can show up. You can use every step of the process as an opportunity to show up on social um, specifically. That's a great place. And, and really, you know, get people to know you and, and to, to form positive opinions about you as an expert, as someone in this field, et cetera. Um, and that's about it for me. Uh, I'd love to hear, yeah, if there's, I guess, any questions for uh, either of us. Awesome. So we've seen a few come in and guys do keep it coming. We got, you know, at least 15 minutes left. So anything you got for Natalie, feel free to keep posting those in the chat box there. In the meantime, a couple that we've seen come in. Uh, someone did ask, can you share an example of what a one liner looks like? Or maybe just an example of like, I'm a blank who offers blank to blank audience. Sure. So I actually, there's some, oh, you guys know her. Let me see if I can pull it, pull her up. Um, really quickly. Um, I just really love hers, but it could be, you know, as simple as um, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a digital marketing expert that helps small business owner owners increase their revenue through online courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's it. You know, a lot of people will say, I help you elevate your business. What does that mean? And it's really frustrating for people to try to understand what you mean. And you're losing points. OK, it's like people are looking for any opportunity to kind of click away or to browse something else. Things are pulling at our attention all the time. And so you want to be able to say who you are, what what's the promise? What are you helping people do and how do you do it? Um, nowadays, you know, there's so many options to offer services. So you have to be really clear. Um, it's not a, you know, a class at a, at a, you know, some sort of center. And it's not a group something. It's an, you know, online courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's like as clear as possible. That is an excellent uh, example of a one-liner. Awesome. Yeah, that's, I think that sounds like a great example and great points on the, you know, what does that mean of it all? <laughs> Being very clear about what exactly that does mean. Um, so another question that we've gotten, uh, you were talking about blog posts a bit, got a couple questions on kind of the length of that. Uh, what's the you know minimum number of words or the length for that? Um, or, you know, how small do you want that to be? Um, I, you know, I, I really kind of, I think that we need to be a little bit more flexible with the way we look at content. Um, you know, again, if you're strictly looking to rank on Google, I'm putting that aside. Okay. I'm going to just, you know, let's, let's get into kind of like a, a, you know, a mindset that's not just focused on, you know, ranking for Google. So it really, it really depends. Um, I've seen people create amazing blog posts that are 500 words and they're so punchy and they're so clear and they provide so much value that people want to read them. And I've also seen people create, you know, 1000 word blog posts that are guides that are, you know, really providing step by step instructions how to do something, which are also really, really valuable. The worst thing you can do is just, you know, take a 500 word blog post, make it into a 1000 words, because you want to, you know, increase the number of words, people, you know, I, I'm sorry for using the word bullshit, but, but people kind of, you know, it's there's so much content out there that we know it's valuable and what isn't. And nobody wants to waste time reading fluff. So if you're providing value, get creative. I've seen people take Instagram posts and really almost create write an entire blog post. I don't know how many words it is. And it's getting so much engagement. And that's great, you know, um, as long as you can get, obviously, people back to your site or have a way of, you know, actually having, you know, making a sale. But but again, get creative. And a really important thing, I didn't include it in here, but I think it's, it's super important, again, Blog post content takes a lot of time. So the worst thing you could do is create a blog post and then promote it with a social media post and then move on to the next blog post. That is the worst thing you could do. The best thing you could do is take one blog post and from that create 10 social media posts 
and create, you know, snippets here and there, like really repurposing it. And then the, you know, the incentive becomes to create a really valuable piece of content that every bit of it can be then repurposed, you know, quotes or stats or tips or mistakes to avoid, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, you're focusing on value and not on the quantity of how many blog posts you can create. Yeah, that is the repurposing. I mean, all of that, but the repurposing is such great, a great point. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to give up all of that good work to waste when it can be used in a whole host of different ways. Totally. Um, totally. Yeah. So a couple more coming, uh, coming in. This is awesome. Um, some asked, you mentioned to make sure to mention your location on the website, et cetera. What would be a solution if I operate in different locations? So for example, I have a photography business and operate in New Jersey and Colorado at the same time. What would be a good way to go? Any thoughts on that? Um, that is a very good question. What would I do? I would write, I, I think there's two ways to do it. Um, one thing could be, you know, uh, I don't know what your headline is, but you know, photography or, 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 you know, wedding photographer in Colorado and, and I forgot what the other place was, <laughs> um, something like that. Or because you have these two options and you might not want both of them in the headline is to have, you know, uh, wedding photographer or whatever specialization. And then right under it is like, you know, where do I operate? Uh, 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 you know, your address, Colorado and your address in Denver, because that's the number one question that someone's going to ask is, you know, is, is, is this relevant for me? Uh, a tricky subject. Someone also just asked, what if you serve all over the USA? So, you know, I think there's, there's oh. levels. Of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're, yeah. I mean, I guess if, if you're, I don't know if it's like an in-person uh, business, if you're online, then, then that doesn't matter. Right. You don't need to say what your location is. If you're kind of a traveling, um, I guess, business person and you're working with, you know, businesses all over, then again, I would, I would do the same thing. I would also write maybe your tagline and then write under it, where, where do I work? Um, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, sure. So someone also asked, um, how do you highlight pain points without being rude or degrading? Which I think is a good question. <laughs> I don't remember what that was specifically in reference to, but <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, I'm curious. Do you mean? Um, highlight pain points like in your marketing when you're trying to say, um, you know, are you frustrated? Is creating a, a brochure too many, too too hard? You know, take you too much time or something like that? Yeah, that's that's sort of how I took that. So whoever asked that question, if you have any clarifying points on that, feel free to post those in the chat. But that's sort of how I took. It. Um. Yeah, I, it's hard for me to think of an example of that. Um, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like 10 different ways to say the same thing. Um, write down those 10 different ways and run them by someone you know and see if they find it degrading. Because, you know, if it is a pain point of mine, then I, I'm going to it's true. You know, it's how it's how I feel. So it, so it might resonate with me. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what, um, you know, what deg what degrading sounds uh, to ask people and 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 definitely do not come off as condescending um you know a hundred percent so definitely put that through you know a filter of other people um mm -hmm. but yeah yeah great good good points good points all around i know that's kind of a tricky one for sure um yeah. more questions on blogs specifically so someone asked how many times should you blog post how often should you blog post if you do blog and then follow up from a different point of view. What if you don't want to use a blog at all? What if blog is not your thing? Um, I think those are great questions. So how often should you blog? The real questions here, you know, I mean, ideally everyone would blog, you know, five times a week and every single day. So be really realistic about your capabilities, right? Because it's really hard to blog every week and it's really hard to create a relevant, compelling, you know, valuable piece of content when you're one person and you're, you know, trying to do a million different things. So it's you need to really adapt the strategy to what what's realistic for you. And I think that what's even more important than blogging a lot, create one blog post that's amazing every two weeks or every single month and then really drive the, the point home by repurposing that blog post and being consistent on social. OK, that's something that I think is really important or breaking up that podcast, uh, that, that blog post of being consistent through your email marketing. And then, you know, you can also you don't need to create a blog post for every email. You can create, you know, a thought within the email itself 
the idea is to be consistent and no, the idea is to provide value consistently. How you do that depends on your capabilities. There's no right way. The right way will always be every day, right? That would be that would be the ideal scenario. That makes sense. Um, lots of blogging questions. Do you have a recommendation for a platform on blogging that you that you that you particularly like or that you've heard great things about? Um, I, you know, I think if people are starting from scratch, maybe a, a little bit of guidance, <laughs> guidance on where to start. Sure. So um, oh, that's a really good question. And I don't actually have a good answer for it because I've been using, you know, kind of WordPress, um, you know, through like kind of our business blog for, for a long time. Um, so I, I don't have a good answer for that. I'm sorry. OK, I think research is probably a good answer, seeing what other people are using. Totally, totally, totally. And you want to be careful. I mean, um, when you have sites like Medium, which a lot of people write on and they're, they're it's, it's an amazing, it's a beautiful site. Again, you don't own that site. And all the people that are going to that blog, you know, you can they can give you distribution, right? You can get on Medium and then they might promote it or a lot of people might get to it. But then it's an extra step where you have to drive them from that Medium to your blog. Um, so, again, it's another step and, and people might just like fall between the cracks. So so you really need to kind of think about if that's, you know, if that's the direction you want to go. But people are providing their thoughts on this. Uh, I think this mm -hmm. is a like, yes. blogging feel free to give your recommendations here. Like one of the joys of this is that we're, it's a wide range of folks all together right now. So feel free to communi communicate here too. Great. Um, great. Just asked a great question. How often should you upgrade in your branding assets, your logos and your website, et cetera? And how can you do this without confusing your clients? Um, that's an excellent question. We get that all the time. We get people refreshing their brand and their logo um, every, I would say like maybe every year or something. I wouldn't do it more than once a year unless, you know, unless the business has completely shifted to another thing. It's just not worth it and it's not really necessary. Um, something that I, I thought was really interesting, we have one of our customers who uses the rebrand as a way to engage with her customers. So every year and a half or so, she'll, you know, she'll put out a big poll, she'll have her customers choose a logo and decide which colors they like, and then they really feel like they're a part of the, the rebrand process. Um, you know, you're gonna want to change your logo a lot. That's the truth. Really the first time you choose a logo, it's really kind of based on what you think. And it takes a really long time to really understand who your actual target customer is and what your value actually is. So wait a little bit because you don't you don't want to shift it all the time. And you want the second time you brand to be informed by data, by your actual target audience. Um, yeah. And I saw someone here write something about how do I get like a resource for value added content? Um, Gary V is the king of repurposing content. He has a presentation have to find it about how, you know, he can take a piece of content and his team will create like, you know, a hundred different posts or something. I really feel that all you need to do is, is read him. <laughs> like it's, he's so good. It's so valuable that it's, yeah. And it's really, you know, relevant and, and exactly, you know, what I think uh, is a good strategy for nowadays. Yeah. And what was that name one more time? Gary V. Oh, Gary V. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, I'm happy to try to find that presentation. I don't know where it is, but I, if you guys want, I'm happy to, to, to dig it up. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of people are already. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You really don't need just, just do what he, what he does. <laughs> Love that. Love having yeah. a tangible resource that we can go to. Yes. Yeah, um, so someone here wrote um, that this, this 270 slide deck, read it it's that's it do do everything that that slide does now's the time guys. <laughs> totally totally it's, it's mostly examples it's more like text for 270 yeah. slides love that um yeah. okay so another question that we've gotten uh in this particular case we are a dj company that offer a variety of services dj lighting photo booth etc so for the companies that have a few different avenues that they interact with their clients what is the best way to present this in a simple way without getting too wordy? Um, that's a great idea. I mean, that's a great idea. It's a great question. So um, I always try, I mean, this this happens to a lot of people, right? You're, you're so many different things. Um, in your case, you're doing DJ services. So say that again. Can you repeat that, Marika? What was it? Yeah, the question was, in this particular case, they're a DJ company that offers DJ services, lighting, photo booth, et cetera. So probably a few other kind of event-based uh, services as well. 
So is this usually, so some questions that, you know, follow-up questions for this are, you know, how often are people buying, you know, the entire package or are people really, you know, coming for really, really specific things? Um, at the end of the day, you're delivering a promise, you know, a way to, to help you, you know, uh, create the best, you know, setup to make your, to make your event a success. That would, you know, the first line needs to be, we are, you know, a DJ, you know, company, et cetera, that, that has, you know, all the tools and services to make your event uh, the biggest success, right? To, to help you create the, the, the best event ever, something like that. Um, and then, you know, a second line could be, we provide X, you know, services, you know, period. You know, that's how I would kind of separate it. But but really try to think, I mean, you have these services, but but what is the desired state, right? At the end of the day, you're taking your customer from someone that doesn't have uh, a DJ setup or anything like that. And, and where are they at the end of the process, you know, with you? What does that look like? So that's the process. And that's, I mean, that's the promise. And that's what you want to lead with. And then you can get into the specifics, you know, and, and breaking it down and, and then be really clear. Is it, is it a product, you know, is it one package? Is it uh, a la carte items, et cetera, or Got services? It. Yeah, great points. And I'll, uh, some folks, again, are offering some of their advice. I love this. Great. We love the community of folks coming together. Um, I actually encourage you guys to, to continue that if you've not been part of a community yet um you know go check out our honeybook community um amongst a whole bunch of other things that is a great place to especially in a time like this when everyone's like i don't know this is new this is a great place to go go to your community and see what other people are doing and what is uh what's being successful for them um yes. so we got time for maybe one more question um i think we've run through quite a few already which is awesome we've gotten through i think so if i missed yours feel free to repost it um sure. or if there's that we have not gotten to. We got about two minutes left before we got to sign off here. In the meantime, I will remind you guys that if you are interested in learning more about the Honeybook side of things, and in our particular case today, walking through how to set up that branding, that kind of like the core of everything that extends through your whole, every single touch point in Honeybook, as well as specifically that brochure file, do join us for the Honeybook working session. That'll be in about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 11:15 uh, a.m. Pacific time. Um, Katie, if you wouldn't mind posting that link again, I don't have it. <laughs> um, but feel free to join us for that. Really, just going to be a straight walkthrough. Um, but anything else that we can address with Natalie in the last couple minutes? Otherwise, we don't want to hold folks hostage uh, any longer than we have to. I know about ours. Um, I involved. like Meredith Road. I think full service oh. event services. Um, I mean, again, it's a little bit, uh, a lot of services, but I like the idea of like the full service, everything you need, you know, to make your events like a raging success um, or, to, you know, to create an event that everyone's going to talk about tomorrow. You know, that's like a tagline. But at the end of the day, it's yes, it's we're an all in one DJ company that provides everything you need to, you know, to create the best event uh, for you. And then the next line would be we offer da 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 da. Yes. Um, so we got one final question here. Now, if you got uh, thoughts on this, how do you show up uh, in Google in a city without a physical address? Do you get a PO box or how do I not list my home address on Google? A good question. <laughs> Probably something people hear away from what they say aren't actually uh, wanting to distribute that. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So um, again, so for Google, my business is if you're if you're uh, servicing servicing, if you're working in kind of a local community, like if your your clients are are local, um, I would use a PO box. Uh, I don't think I would use your home address. It's whatever address you would use for your business. So if you're using, um, I don't know actually, if you're using your home address for your business, uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. But I think a PO box is probably your best bet. And again, anything that's related to Google, getting on, you know, making sure that you're Google My Business, that you're on, you know, when people search for maps, that your Google, that your business is there, all those things, it helps Google connect the dots. Okay, so that when someone is searching for a photographer in Austin, it kind of gives you more juice, uh, link, you know, link juice, whatever you want to call it for SEO terms, uh, so that you'll be one of the first um, companies that shows up. So. Well, guys, I think that is what we have time for today. I know there's a lot of information, so just a reminder, tune yeah. out, not to worry. Again, I know webinars are exhausting. You can always come back to this link that you used to log in just now, and this replay will be available in about two and a half minutes. Um, and then we also have a post in our HoneyBook blog that will include the link to the replay, which I think we can repost in a second here. So thank you guys cool. all so much um, for joining us. I just want to say, 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, say before we end, that, um, I am like we are offering uh, kind of two two things for everyone that's, uh, that's watching. One of them is a coupon um, that I can share. Um, I guess with Marika, or I can just write it in the chat box. So, uh, thirty percent off of all of our plans if you want to go into Taylor Brands and create a logo, and then you know use that logo to create you know awesome social posts and website and all that stuff. Um, you can get thirty percent off, and um, we have a you know a branding cheat sheet. It's a really quick, we call it the, an hour branding cheat sheet. Within an hour, you can kind of really define uh, who you are, uh, what your kind of purpose and your, your values are and who your target audience is. And so we'll, I'm happy to send that over. So I'll send that over to Marika after this. And thank you, thank you all. <laughs> awesome, thank you guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, feel free to reach out to Natalie or reach out to us at HoneyBook at concierge.honeybook.com um, or do join us in 15 minutes for a little bit more of a deeper dive on what we talked about. Um, but either way, have a wonderful rest of your day and hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.